Sorry about the mess behind me. I'm still moving in. So a few months ago, I was lucky enough to grab an RTX 3070 graphics card. So that kind of made me really want to do a whole new computer build instead of upgrade my old one. So I sent out a quick poll on YouTube and asked you, the viewer, what I should do. This is what you wanted. If you're here to watch me fail to build a PC, you've come to the right place. Let's get started with a little build. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform that lets you basically take as many classes on their site as you'd like for a monthly fee. These classes are done with video lessons and projects to help you learn more about the things you're interested in, such as video editing, productivity, or even how to better create YouTube content. I'll confess, I'm a one-man team on YouTube, so I try to keep my YouTube production skills up to date and easy to manage. So classes like MKBHD's YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and Edit really comes in handy for me. Skillshare is curated towards learning, so there's no ads in the classes, and it costs less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. If you're interested in Skillshare, check out the link in the video description below. The first 1,000 subscribers to click on that link will get a free trial when joining on Skillshare. Anyway, now back to the video. So I kind of went a little all out. AMD Ryzen 5600X processor, RTX 3070 Founders Edition. We also have a 970 Evo Samsung NVMe M.2 SSD, white RGB RAM. That's pretty cool, right? White RAM. The Corsair IQ H100i Elite Capital X AIO cooler, which the only reason, let's be honest, the only reason why I picked this one is I thought it looked cool. And a small form factor Corsair power supply. I'm trying to fit it all in this case right here. The Gigabyte B550 Vision D motherboard. It's a creator motherboard, but all that really means is as some extra features include on it that's not on your standard B550 motherboard, and it's expensive, but it fits the look that we're going for. So this is the motherboard that I decided to go with. I've actually only built around three or four computers in my entire lifetime with the first one being around 2016. And the only knowledge I had about building one was based off of some Linus Tech Tips and Austin Evans type videos. But yeah, as for this motherboard, I really like it. It looks really nice. That white aesthetic that we're going for in this build, it's all there. Even has nice plastic all over it. Beautiful. I've never owned one of these. I've only owned like the SATA type of SSDs. So this will be a new experience for sure. Well, I'm, I'm kind of scared. I've never installed these before. Oh, okay. Okay. One second. Yep. Okay. Yep. Nice. So then we need to put our screw back on so that it stays in place. I actually like how much easier it is to do an M.2 drive versus a SATA drive. I guess what I'm trying to prove with this video is that it's never too late to start putting together your own computer. If you're 13, 14 watching this, even if you're 35, 40, 50, doesn't matter. I wanna show you what it's like as someone who doesn't build these things too often, builds one every few years or so. I wanna give you that sort of perspective and I hope this is useful in some way. The first build I ever did, it wouldn't turn on at first and that was primarily my fault because I didn't realize that you had to connect the cables of the case to the motherboard to actually use the power switch. Yeah, I know, it's a very dumb mistake, but as a beginner, you might make these sort of very simple mistakes. I've never put on an M.2 drive before and it was that easy. I got two eight gigabyte sticks of this Corsair RGB ramp. I probably should have went with 32 so I could fill out all four slots to make it look really, really cool and uh, consistent. But I personally didn't feel like I needed 32 gigs for what I plan to do with this build. So I decided to go against it. Ooh, no, wrong side. No, 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 that, that would have been bad. That would have been bad. Okay, RAM sticks in. Looks good. Ooh, okay, yeah. Okay, AMD AM4. This is the bracket we're looking for. Uh, okay. Get up there, big boy. This is the Lee and Lee 011 Dynamic Mini. I didn't want the bigger size because I actually wanted this to fit in rooms instead of taking up the entire space. I like how it's all white in the inside. And initially, I'm not gonna add any kind of cool colored fans in here other than the standard fans that came with the products I've shown you already. But I do plan to get those um, Lee and Lee Uni SL120 fans, because those look really cool. And I think it really adds to the white aesthetic of this build. But the reason why I'm not buying those right now is because they're kind of sold out everywhere and you can buy them, but only off of AliExpress. And if you buy from AliExpress, 
it takes two to three months to even get to you. So it wouldn't have came in in time for this build. And maybe this is just a practical side of me here, but I'm also not about to spend $200 on computer fans. I'm good. I'm gonna be honest with you. The one thing I hate about PC building is the fact that it creates so much waste. There's so much packaging that at the end you have to throw away or keep up with, and it's kind of annoying. I think that's one of the big cons of it. I know it seems kind of minor, but it's also something, something to keep in mind because the table I'm using right now, you can't see it, but all up on this side, all up on that side, and on the ground a little bit too, is just nothing but plastic everywhere. Ooh, this is not going well. It's an hour in and I'm not even halfway done. <sighs> so first time installing an AIO, it's not my favorite. It took me a good 30 minutes to do it. <sighs> no! No, 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 no. I hate AIOs. I hate AIOs. I hate AIOs. And the AIO is done. Finally. I hate AIOs. Did I mention that? I think I did. Well, I hate them even more now. Time to install the power supply. We got a little baby one right here. Tiny, the small form factor power supply. This one doesn't accept a full size power supply, so we have to go with this small one. Power supply is in, and I guess now all we have to do is plug everything in to power, and then we should be good. I don't think I'm missing anything. Nope, other than some RGB and some lights, um, we should be good. Let's finish that up. Okay. The moment of truth, pulling out the graphics card. Ooh, okay. That's a pretty card. Ooh, no, 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 no. Founders Edition card is actually really nice. I did not expect it to look this nice. I was actually going for the, what's that card called? The Vision card that matches with this motherboard, but that one was $120 more than this one at like 620. And at the same time, they're sold out just as much as this one. So you won't be finding that one anytime soon, but I'm actually very happy with how this Founders Edition card turned out. It looks great in this build. Okay, so, so far I really like how it's turned out. Let me turn this around for you guys. Looks really nice. Now I'm just gonna use these extension cables to plug in the power supply and then we'll see how it ends up looking. So now let's move to that spot and roll the b-roll. All right, it's been a month now, and those out of stock Lee and Lee fans that I try to convince myself I don't need and won't buy, I ended up buying anyway. I went way more over budget than I intended because I didn't realize this case didn't come with fans. That's my own negligence, of course, but anyway, enough about that. I don't wanna talk about how much I overspent anymore. <laughs> I think the overall build with the white theme ended up really, really cool. Honestly, it looks super clean. While I did stick a bunch of RGB fans into the system, I plan to keep it at a stagnant white because, well, honestly, I like that look better and because I think people are super tired of rainbow puke skittles all over their system. But before we end this video, I just wanted to summarize this whole experience. I'm not a PC building novice but by no means am I a pro. I'd like to think I'm the average PC builder. There were times in previous PC builds where I put things in the wrong spots they weren't supposed to be, like RAM sticks in unoptimal positions, but that's the thing, right? You don't get better without trial and error. And as you saw in this video, I made errors. I've never used an AIO liquid cooler like this one before. I've always used the default stock coolers, and it took me a solid hour to figure out the AIO and get it installed. 
And so overall, it took a good four hours to build this PC and get it up and running with Windows. But if you really know what you're doing, you can probably get it up and running in about two hours. I know a ton of non-techy people think building a PC is difficult, but it really isn't and it just takes some time and patience. If on a scale of one to 10, with one being building with Legos, and five being IKEA furniture, and a 10 being building a rocket ship, I think building a PC is a solid six out of 10 on the difficulty scale. You just need to know what you're doing beforehand. Anyway, I hope you enjoy watching me fail to install a cooler. How do you think the build ended up? Is there anything you would personally change? Do you like the white theme? Why or why not? Are you planning to build your own PC? Leave all that in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And well, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.